Hello everyone and welcome to another episode in the Amazing Paper Server. My name is Grain and if you haven't seen any of my episodes before, welcome. If you have, welcome back. This is episode number two on the Amazing Paper Server. You join me in my temporary underground office. It's not quite a Kerala style yet with the opulent diamonds everywhere, but we'll get there eventually. Slowly but surely. But as he would say, this is this base of ours is is basic. Not so shabby, but room for improvement, I would say. So what has happened since the last episode? Well, I have a few farms and in this episode really I'm going to take you a tour of, of these farms. What I also want to do is, is is talk you through plans for the series. Um, I have some very very rough ideas in terms of the style I want to go with, the approach I'm going to take, but as I've said previously, I, I'm going to keep it chilled, it's going to be relaxed, it's not going to be hectic. And um, the farms I've built mostly are my sort of initial starter farms that I do, so rather than take you through, for viewers of my Graincraft single player series, rather than take you through them, um, the, how to build those farms, how they work, etc. I'm not going to repeat myself. If you want to see a little bit more about how the farms work, then check out my Graincraft series. I talk in a little more detail in, in those episodes about the various farms and, and how they work and, and the designs that I've used for them. But in this episode, I'll take you on a bit of a summary of what we've done. Um, and if I can keep the camera, I've just realized there is no zoom button. I need to sort that out. I have actually, uh, for your information, moved. Well, I can zoom like that, I guess. I have moved from Forge to Fabric for my mod loading. And I might mention a little bit about the mods that I'm using. We're trying to keep this server as vanilla as possible. So the mods that I'm using are more for video editing purposes. I've, I'm starting to get my head around the replay mod. So rather than using a camera account, which is a pretty janky way of doing things, if you ask me especially with, with uh, when you're running two instances of Minecraft on one PC. I am hoping to get, get the hang of that replay mod and have some really, really sort of uh, smooth, uh, swanky animations as I'm, as I'm building things throughout the series. So um, that will happen. Um, I'm not sure it will sure happen in this episode, but it will happen once I get the hang of it. But uh, for now, uh, first of all, I need to go off and install for myself a fabric version of uh, the Optifine Zoom mod. I'm sure there's plenty out there. And yeah, very happy. We can now do some dramatic zooms like this. Zoom. Yeah, I know. It's me just being childish, but I can now uh, have some dramatic zooms for you in future videos. Right at the beginning I built this starter hut. It's wooden at least, so it's not as basic as you can possibly get with a dirt hut, but it's wonderfully located for me. It's surrounded by water. You've got grass plains or pla plains biomes behind me, which gives us a bit of flat area to build on. And then you've got in the corner, you can just see the cactuses there in the desert, which gives me plentiful sand, which I always seem to lack Whenever, whenever I play, I always seem to lack sand and easy access to sand, but that's not a problem here. Um, and, and we have the forest biome here, which is uh, mainly oak trees. It's got some uh, birch trees as well, and the spruce trees I've planted myself, so they're not native to this area. This little uh, boardwalk here um, gives you a good view of the various farms that I've built. Um, and yeah, I'll give you a quick, I'll point you towards them in their general direction so you can get the lay of the land. Up there is my slime farm AFK spot. It's not the greatest slime farm, but it gives me some a small amounts. And the iron farm over there, we have pumpkins and melons, for which I've had to grow a lot of, and more on that later. These green guys, uh, of course, were villagers. They were supposed to be for my iron farm, but of course, as you can see, they're uh, not feeling very well, so um, I'll need to cure those. And that is my breeder over there get a closer look at this breeder it is at the moment switched off which is uh, that dirt block there is the very crude rudimentary off switch and um, that prevents the villagers from seeing the beds here so that they don't breed they're not in love mode but and the food there as you can see plenty of potatoes there and it's just one of the basic basic breeders where uh, the farmer feeds the other villager and um, they do things to make babies we have a, a bone meal compost 
little set up here for um, the flowers that the iron farm um, the golems drop and uh, I just pop them in there it goes through the composter and, and ends up as bone meal not huge amounts of bone meal of course but um, I haven't used it yet but I'm sure there'll be a need for those in time and certainly until I find a skeleton spawner so um, one thing that I do want to take you through is sort of the, how, we've, how these farms have come together um, a little bit about where they are because not all of those uh, I've, I've introduced you to yet there is some underground stuff and first of all I, when I got here after the hut I went mining stepping back in time a little bit this is uh, my, my base area in the uh, very early hours and this is where we decided to kick off the mine and I'm literally punching dirt so um, yeah I decide I can't be punching dirt, not a man of, of my status. We get some tools going on. And what what I normally do in terms of mining tactics, there's various different ways that I've seen people mine, but I just dig a staircase down, two by two two wide staircase, and just dig it down. Because as I'm sure many of you know, the goodies are in the lower levels. So we're looking really to get below 20, a Y level of 20. Once you're down there, then we get access to, to the lapis, to, to gold, and of course diamonds, which is really what we're aiming for. She prioritized a bit of mining a bit of diamond hunting and we struck diamonds pretty quickly actually on the first day as you can see here yeah what a glorious sight that is early on in the game so I yeah I think there were how many would we have I think there were seven diamond ore box that we found we have no fortune uh, picks or anything at the moment so they are literally seven diamonds one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe six actually. But yeah, I mean that's 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 a pretty good haul for probably about half an hour into my mining. Um at Y eleven, by the way, is my Y level of choice because it keeps you above the lava pools so you don't get lava raining down on top of you. But yeah, not a bad not a bad start at all. Well here we go. It's a satisfying feeling doing this. And I get the advancement too, nice. Thank you, Digit. Yep, it's a great feeling. And uh, I really think there should be some similar sounds to that when you actually mine diamonds in, in Minecraft. Not too shabby, not too shabby at all. Yeah, we got gold, iron, and lapis. And some redstone, of course, as well. That's not a bad start. That's probably been about an hour of mining. I've already uh, gone through my diamonds. We have the right tools um, that we need for uh, obsidian uh, mining. And I think that's probably, as you can see right below my feet, I have a watered some lava. Just fill out, fill out that chest with some of the less valuable stuff. We need to do some more smelting as well. But below my feet, there is some obsidian which needs to be mined because I need to get to the nether. A bit of a tip for those that are, are have trouble with uh, obsidian burning in lava below i think i got it from pixel riffs uh, some time ago um who's uh who's a really really underrated uh youtuber um, on, the, on the minecraft world if you go check him out i highly encourage it but yeah put water down put some water currents down that flow in the direction of where you're mining so if there is as happens quite often lava underneath the block you're mining get yourself out of harm's way but it, it immediately converts the lava to obsidian and you do not lose the block. All in all, a 
pretty productive um, and quite a long mining session as you can see there's lots of tunnels been built lots of uh, minerals or even to to still to mine but yeah there's extensive mining has happened it's taken me some time i've even encountered some tunnels from others that are, we've all crisscrossed because we're in the same area and of course we have a mine shaft nearby so it's been yeah I, I do need to uh explore this a little bit more i've done little bits but not not all of it but the next thing i need to show you is the spider spawner that is located handily enough directly below my base and is proving very useful indeed as an early xp source and of course uh, a source of uh, spider related goodies that they drop this is the area where i afk uh, it's it's a really good design um i'll i will link to this in the description uh, but yeah with a diamond sword i can afk for some time and and really build up the supplies so i can i can perhaps sell the sell them early on they're quite useful for potions and, and things and also for wool of course you can craft uh, string into wool in the, in the java version of the game on day one we have me mining for the basics we have some people that have already started building a mini game some sort of skyblock style mini game which is um halfway between my my starter base and the spawn town yeah very interesting i think this is green's work he's mentioned a little bit of a a slight pvp style game which uh, may involve removing people from their platforms but yeah we'll uh definitely have to check that out and come back to that later but i'm uh, i'm up overground as you can see i felt i needed some natural light it was getting very uh claustrophobic down in those mines um so i'm at the moment heading over uh the, heading heading around the surrounding area just having a quick look around there's a random dirt house there but the idea is i need to find some villagers because i want to start getting some villager based farms going I've tried exploring in one direction with no joy. Uh, I'm actually right back at my starter base. It's just over that green hill there. But there's a, a couple of rivers nearby. I've explored down one of them, but I'm going to try... And that didn't last very long. I don't know about anyone else, but does anyone think that the rivers in this game could do with some work? They don't, just don't seem to flow very well. There's always these little blockages in the way. So I just feel this need to uh, help the river reach the sea maybe it's just me I don't know. but and it looks better of course as well looking a bit more natural so let me just clear out this little channel and we'll continue on our way right now let's see where we can go oh and again probably thinking why on earth is he putting so much effort clearing a half a hillside just to make the river look better well as you can see I didn't particularly uh, make the river look that much better because I didn't actually fill the water in but the idea is that if I find a village and I know there is one around here somewhere from looking at the seed map we have uh, yeah we have a village around here that uh, a potential here with a river to boat a couple of villages uh, away, whisk them away from their home and um, obviously give them a good life but uh, really their, their role is to make more villages so in terms of a breeder I, I don't know if you saw the houses uh, just just a minute ago there but here we are and yeah the mission now is to capture a couple of villages sorry uh, uh, borrow a couple of villages permanently and transport them back to my base.
and with our two new villager friends successfully moved to my base I took some time to rustle some cattle to punch some plant life and start work on the breeder and this breeder I, I had built most of the perimeter if you like of it um, beforehand before the villagers were fetched but they're now safely inside this nine by nine square crop we also got some sheep as well on my travels so we have uh, some supplies of wool if i can get to them there we go another pro tip for those who want to be able to jump over a fence but not let their animals get out put some carpet there we go. so yes i've got some i've also got chickens as well actually i didn't show you that on camera but chickens cows and sheep are now nicely domesticated in in my little uh homestead but yeah let's take you back to show you a little bit about this breeder for successful villager breeding you need beds you need food and you need a villager that feels quite safe and secure so we have walled these two villagers inside this uh, beautiful dirt compound off uh, they've got crops in there one of them is a farmer because there is a composter in the middle uh, a design by logical geek boy which uh, i have used before and works splendidly another thing i found is that um, beds seem to be breeding seems to be more successful if beds don't actually have a block directly underneath them um, and also they need to two blocks above them that are uh, non-solid blocks like basically so that the babies that get produced can be can bounce on the bed because of course that's what that's what kids do so um yeah the villagers when they start breeding there needs to be a bit of time for this for this farm to prime itself get some get some food grown and then in the inventories of the two villagers in there and with enough beds babies will come one more thing uh, of uh, importance actually especially if you're in a, a stormy stormy biome is to ensure there is uh, a roof above the villagers to stop them uh, getting struck by lightning and turning into witches now i think you actually need a, a bit of a higher clearance maybe two or three blocks above the villagers heads but um i i think the chances are low that i'm putting this glass ceiling above the villagers the time has come to finally build myself a nether portal in my base and i've selected this location i'm just checking if there are because it's it's kind of night time it's getting to be night time i'm just checking there are no nasties hanging around we yeah we'll put it here i've already marked out the location and we can actually get around a little faster so i will scrimp on the obsidian just for now although i will change that because i'm a bit of a stickler for the uh, symmetrical portals of which uh, we have a data pack in this game i believe i think it's a data pack anyway that allows us to have non-regular shaped portals which you may well have noticed already on my video or on others uh, right uh, i just need to craft myself uh, uh, why on earth am i trying to light a portal with shears i think it might be time for me to go to bed in real life of course let's just get this lit first of all flint and steel that's what i'm looking for i think i've uh must have had a hard day i believe and maybe some iron while i'm here and my voices you can probably hear in my voice as well that's starting to go so uh yeah well, let's uh light this up and see where we end up but, you know this should be a much quicker way to get to the uh, spawn town and the shopping districts oh, there's already players on top of the nether so we'll take advantage of that at some point as well okay so here we are this looks like it's already been dug out there's no way this can be natural generation in this uniform manner i have a feeling that this portal might this portal may well have taken me to the uh, the nearest already existing portal let's see let's go back in and see where we end up 
Possibly in Spawn Town, I'd imagine. Uh, yes, yes. So this is right by my my boat. I wanted also to tell you about the sto story behind these uh, four unfortunate souls here. They are products of my breeder. But as you can see here, um, we've added four more. If you can see, they are in the daylight. But uh, they are not burning up. They are not dying. So mystified i consulted one of my uh, fellow players in this case uh, green who i think may have been the only other player on the server at the time uh, but he he believes that there is a uh, there there must be a, a logical reason behind this and he was quite right actually as it turned out he came to visit later on and did a little bit of inspection he was adamant there's no way they would be alive even if they were in minecarts and it turns out there because these were half slabs their uh, hitboxes actually touch the water underneath and so that is why you hear this fizzing sound yet they do not die so they are yeah they are uh, they get they get to experience the outdoors which is uh, which is nice for them um, but yeah we'll have to get the uh, potions from the uh, the, the, the weakness potions uh, from the spider farm and, and yeah brew up some potions get some golden apples and get these guys healed because I plan I plan to first of all build a crop farm with them uh, I'll need three villagers for that and second of all we need to make sure that they uh, have the right trades and we will start trading with them as well so a little trading area as well um, well I say little I might get quite ambitious with the librarian side of things to get myself some some books for personal consumption of course i mentioned earlier we were going all out on the pumpkins we we this is the stage where we planted uh, some pumpkins we we got some melons down as well some beetroot some wheat the wheat really was just to breed the the cows and to uh, for, for the leather and the meat and of course the the melons is just uh, it's a useful crop for i think it's quite high nutritional value for what's quite an easy crop to grow i also forgot to put some water down of course which is why the farmland was spoiling so the reason um these few seeds turned into uh farming pumpkins on mass was i struck up a deal with uh green who uh opened up what well, really while i was doing some very basic early game farming he had explored large amounts of the end and had collected a crazy amount of sugar boxes and even opened up built and opened up a shop in the shopping district so I had no diamonds at this point because I'd used them all on tools and weapons and so I struck up a deal because uh, he needed pumpkins uh, for one of his projects potentially uh, Potentially as a light source, uh, carved pumpkins with, uh, with the candles in. I forget what they're actually called. Um, Jack o' lanterns. That's it. Uh, so I actually struck up a deal to provide a industrial scale amount of pumpkins to to him in exchange for a sugar box, just to help out with my uh, inventory capacity. Right. I think it's time to finish off this episode with a, a quick uh, look around my iron farm which is a flattened island, so to be a little bit away from the main base to not interfere with the, the, the fact that it is a standalone village effectively. So this is it, it's a logical Geek Boy design, same as in my single player world, but not quite as productive as my single player world unfortunately. And it appears Green is having a bit of a battle with uh, a raid. He's having fun with a tier 5 raid, so good luck to him. Um, yeah, so it's slightly different design from a single player world in that I funnel the, the golems into one plate, one killing area rather than two. I have a, also a, a torch, a redstone torch column to turn the the farm on and off. I'll, I'll show you a little bit about how that works in a bit. So this is the hopper collection system below some lava which funnels into one chest. And whilst the rates aren't brilliant, I still have, I think in about in a couple of days, I've got four stacks of iron blocks, which is not too bad. And we have a, the on off switch. Uh, down here which uh, sends a signal up the torch column and uh, those pistons up there they at the moment they are lowered so that they are extended sorry so that the, the villagers can't see the zombies 
when they are retracted the villagers in theory can see the zombies and the iron farm is turned on the the actual farm itself does struggle during the day i don't know what it is but when they sleep they seem to see the zombies and get scared and produce golems but during the day they don't do that so i maybe the beds are a little bit closer need to be a little bit closer sorry and and maybe uh maybe it's just the fact that it's on a server rather than the single player world i don't know it worked fine in my single player world so yeah i'll look into that a little bit maybe it's not urgent because we are still getting good good amounts of iron for for what i need at least anyway so uh, just over in the distance there i mentioned this at the start of the video is my afk spot for the slime farm it's not been again as the iron farm it's not been the most productive farm i think that there's a lot more caves i need to light up so i'm not sure i'm going to bother too much with that i'll probably just find another slime chunk um in the ocean so there's a deep ocean here so i'll i've got two slime blocks out of it that on that will certainly be enough for the time being but uh, it's always useful to have a steady supply of slimes but yeah with this big ocean here there's a deep ocean i can use for that so yeah let, let's uh let's call it a day thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed the episode it's been great fun uh, catching you up with all of the farms I've been looking at and building and uh, and, and in enjoying doing it um, with other people, which is a nice change from a single player world. So take care, everyone. See you next time.